We are honored to have your presence, ma'am. And now we will present them with a token of appreciation. A round of applause, please. I now hand over the mic to Sir uh, Asim Tabra to do the introduction of our guest for today, our masterclass. I also remind you to kindly switch off your cell phones or turn it on silent mode before the masterclass. Thank you. So, uh, folks, I'm not good to read out Rosalie's uh, bio. I think you are in for a real treat because uh, just a brief conversation I had. She's been working as a costume designer uh, in French cinema, as well as in theater. She comes from a film family also. We'll talk about that. She even acted in some films. Um, but I, I, as a master class, this is going to be a very, very special experience because she's going to walk you through not just her own work, with other French filmmakers, including her father, Jacques Demy's work with very well-known filmmaker. Uh, I'm sure you've seen you know, his, his, some of his very well-known musicals and other films. Um, so we'll, we'll spend about an hour, hour and a half, looking at some clips. Rosalie will describe each of the films. And to give you an idea about what kind of you know, costumes are designed in French cinema and the thought that goes behind it. And I think that's the most precious thing about the masterclass. So Rosalie, welcome. Um, we're really happy to have you here in India. So welcome to Goa. Um, so I, 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 before we start to look at, just give me a sense of your, your mother, uh, your Agnes' father's daughter, your father's Jacques Demy. Uh, you grew up in a French. Uh, your brother Matthew, right? Yes. And he's a he's an actor also? and he's a film director. Yeah. So from your childhood, from the early childhood, you were in a world of cinema and okay. theater also then. But tell us about how that influenced you to become a costume designer. Well, you know, I come from a family uh, of cinema, so my childhood, uh, for me, it was pretty normal to be with actors and to be with film directors. And, and I was very lucky to have a very cultural um, childhood. Uh, so, to, um, you know, it's very difficult when you do a master class um, because I'm always interested in who comes to a master class and what kind of, you know, where do you come from. When I do some master class in Boza school, you know, art school or fashion school, and you know, I really know that the people are studying fashion or are studying art or studying cinema. So first of all, before coming uh, beginning, I would be, I would love to know um, if there is a fashion designer in the audience. Or is there a costume designer there? Are there, are there, are there maybe filmmakers. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. Are there any filmmakers, <laughs> young filmmakers, or? Yes. So all filmmakers obviously are interested <laughs> in costume design and, at the end of the day. And do the students from cinema study? Oh, that's, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, you know, for me, you know, my childhood was like a fairy tale because of course, like a lot of little girls, I used to really, you know, love costume and would, you know, what I would find in the house, I would do, a, you know, a dress of princess or a dress of uh, things like that. So really, my childhood was a kind of a normal childhood. But when I got to 15 years old, 15 years old, and I was, you know, able by the culture of my family to see a lot of films, to go to theaters. And my education was really done in museum, was really done in reading and going to see theater things. So for me, you know, the, 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 the big connection was by my education. That's why I think, you know, we, if you have a possibility to, to go and see in museum paintings and sculpture, and if you're able to read a lot about art, this really was the base of my work. So after I finished high school, I did a you know an art school for one year to prepare you know, me to go to a fashion high fashion school where I stayed two years and did really the studies of how to cut a costume, how to sew a costume, but not only that, how to I would say look at the painting, look at the costume, and try to understand how it's made, why it's made, 
and how the composition of the painting is done. So I think the base of this is really, uh, I feel I was like a, you know, like a phone. And in the phone, you could put a lot of information, or I was like a computer, and you could put a lot of information. And really, I really started as an assistant, like mostly you, know, you always got by, by the base. And I was lucky, of course, I was helped because I was from a cinema family. So my first you know, internship was you know, on my father's movie. It was a period cartoon, so you know, I was 20, 30 years old, something like that. So I was helped. But I always say, in the beginning, you can be helped by your family. But at one point, if you don't work, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you will not tell it, uh, you know, it only will be a little bit. Yes. But it will stop. So then I really worked very, very hard um, as an assistant for several years of a very good uh, cartoon designer, a man called Christian Gass. And while I was his assistant, I began myself to do cartoon. Um, so then I did movies, theater, opera, commercial, uh, photo design, <coughs> art direction, and after all this, you know, after, I would say, when I was 45, um, I began to be interested in doing other things, because I felt that I went a bit full of all what I could do, so I began to do set, you know, and then 15 years ago, I began to work for the Canton Festival, where I'm a, a set decorator, and I construct places and we take care of a lot of events for the Canton Festival. And on the side of that, I do, you know, I'm a curator for exhibition and I do books. So I think the evolution is interesting in your own life to have an evolution of what you're doing. And, and you know, um, this is a, for me now, you know, all that I've done before, I can use it in another job. I can use it in a new experiment. I think in getting in older in age, what is very interesting is that everything you have done is uh, rich for you. Right. And you can give it back in right. another way. Right. Yeah. So I feel I'm <coughs> very lucky. So this is my little bit of so before we Before we look at um, the, uh, the clips that you have, which is I'm very excited about, I'm just curious if you can give them an idea. When you meet with a film director or a theater director, and they talk to you as their costume designer. What kind of a conversation you have? How, what kind of questions you ask in terms of? Okay, you? so this is always you know, very interesting, and you like to say. So for me, it's like that. You have a story. So it's a screenplay, it can be a theater play, it can be the pitch of a commercial, it can be a pitch of a video clip, anything. You have the story, you read the story. Okay. Then you speak with the director, the film director, and he is going to give his, I would say, what he wants to do of the story. Because the story is not so important. It is important, but it's how you give the story. A film maker is how he will share the story. You know, if it's a love story, we have a lot of love stories. What is interesting is how you will describe this love story. What is, will be the film? So the conversation with the film director is, you know, I will give a basic example. It's a couple, okay, it's a couple, a man and a woman, and they're married since 10 years. That's not the good information for me. The good information for me is what is their job, what is their culture, from what the class background, uh, what is the object, and why he's interested in this love story, and who is this woman? And I need to know uh, the history of this woman. I need to know what the filmmaker had in mind of before the film. You know, if let's say I don't know if uh, if she, what job is she doing, the family background, and, <coughs> and and everything. So I get into his world. A costume designer has to go in the in, in the world of the filmmaker, in the world of the story. And then we work with the design department, with the production design. So, you know, it's not only a costume. I always say uh, the costume is not allowed 
if the actor doesn't feel it is our film, and if it doesn't fit with the background. So you have the story, you have the, the work with the production designer, with the filmmaker, with the director of photography, you know, because you're not going to do the same costume if, let's say, to give you an example, the film will only be at night, okay? So it would be dark, okay? So if you put a black costume, you know that you will never see anything. So we have this kind of conversation, you know? Um, and then what is important is not only the costume, but the image, the background, the meaning, a costume gets alive when it's wearing, when you're wearing it. When, when you're wearing it, you know. Otherwise, the costume is dead. The, the costume has no point if it's not uh, being on an actor. It has to be lived with the actor. It has to be lived with the actor. So you know, this part is very important. And then when you decide, let's say, he needs a red T-shirt. Okay, a T-shirt. Okay, but why is a T-shirt? What is the shape of the t-shirt? What red is it? What material is it? Is it new? Is it old? Is it used? Uh, is it a little bit too little because the, 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 you know, the character has taken weight? Right. Or if it's too loose because the character has lost weight? Or I have, you have questions that are really interesting of a, a basic t-shirt can, can give you a lot of information on the character. You know, I, I think it's uh, what I always say when I go in fashion design school. I say, you know, a, 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 a nice dress or evening gown or tuxedo is easy to do. Why is it not easy? It's to do an uh, everyday life costume. Uh, this is much more difficult because all the information are given by you know the physics of the character and. Half of his work as an actor is done by the hair, by the makeup, by the costume, by the jewelry, by the shoes, and by how he will behave. Will he work fast? Will he work slowly? So the costume designer is not on costume. It's trying to get all this together for the actor. No, I think it's really interesting because, you know, as a script writer, uh, as a director writes a script, whoever, you, you describe the characters somewhat and you write the, the dialogues, etc. And But when people see the film, the first thing that the costumes makes the character come alive. Yes, because it's the first image of that you have of a character. So the first image is like, black. and now you have to know, you know, okay, oh, she has long hair, she has a dark dress, She's very skinny. She looks sad. Maybe the character is, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe another, you have a man, he's beautiful, he's handsome, he has a nice shirt, he's a kind of a sexy boy. Okay, so what's going to be the story? Oh, you see? So I think it's very important um, to define uh, what is the meaning. And you cannot do one costume for one costume. You do what you see on the screen. So it has a relationship. You cannot think, I'm going to do a night costume for him because he's the main character, and all the rest is going to be shitty. <laughs> you know? It's not possible to work like that. You work like a painter, in a sense. You, you have a screen, and you work with the film director and with the production designer, and you see everything. And everything is supposed to have a sense. Okay? In our Bollywood films, often there, there's a song sequence, and the lead actor and actress will be wearing very beautiful, colorful clothes, and everybody in the background is like very drab. But that's not real life. <laughs> no. So then we will talk about different, you know, uh, case, uh, you know. So, um, but to start with, I thought it would be interesting. I'm going to show you films where I did not do the costume, okay? But um, I think it's interesting to explain how how you work. You know, and how, and, and, and you know, and how different type of costume designer works. You know, because I always say this incredible story. Uh, maybe you know who's Lucino Visconti, who's a Italian film director. Yeah, Visconti, yeah. And he did a lot of period movies. He 
very he was very refined and, and, and he had he was very precise in what he wanted. And in um, in some of his films he has the production designer to put real period costume in a cupboard that was closed where you could not see what was inside. But he said um, for the guitar. The Gepard is the, the Gepard is a Visconti film with Bert Lancaster and Claudia Carmina. Uh, yes, so the, the leopard, the leopard. The, the yeah. leopard, yes. Yeah. And, and, the and yeah. he said to the production designer, in the cupboard, on the table, I want period cloth, period costume. And the production designer said, but nobody's going to see what's inside the cupboard. And he said, you know, but the actress, Claudia Carminal, she will be in her bedroom, and she will know that in the cupboard there are the other dresses. And I thought it was very interesting to, to have a relationship to say that because of all what is around you, it will influence for an actor what you can do. So this is maybe too much. But I always say it's interesting to see how filmmakers have a different relationship with production design, with costume. So my point of view is that costume designers are not here to be historical. <coughs> Our job is not to do a reconstitution for music. Our job is to reinvent something that would have the taste and the idea of what we want. Real costumes, like historical period costumes that are in museums, are done for the museum. Our job is an artistic job. So that means if we do a period costume, it's not necessary to redo exactly the period costume. What is interesting is to give to the actor, to the film, what can help them and what will be good for them. You know, and you have really different types of costume design. Mm -hmm. Some costume design are really like, you have to do the historical mm -hmm. with constitution, the costume has to be really how it was. And then you have other costume designers, like me, where we think it's important to share and that the audience can, can, can be helped for the story. Mm -hmm. And besides that, the bodies, our bodies, you know, in the 21 century, are not <coughs> the same than at the Middle Age, 18th century, 1920s. So we have a, you know, we have to understand that this evolution makes, um, makes no point of view to redo the historical costume. Like, in the 18th century in France, people were much smaller than what we have in France now. You know, so if you go in, in you know, in castles and you see furniture, you are always very surprised to find that the beds are very small. You know, but because people were much smaller. <coughs> you know, so it's it's I mean the evolution of the the, the, the world our human evolution has an evolution. And the second fact too is that fashion, street fashion, high fashion, has an influence on, on, on cinema. And you can see it in, you know, in, in Hollywood films or even in European films. I, I'm sorry because I don't know enough Indian films. It, it, has, yeah, it has an influence on us, but it has an influence. So I hope I answered yeah, yeah, the, 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 the question. Yeah. So yes, yeah. so we're going to the beginning. So this is a the first this is the first film that my father has done in nineteen fifty nine <coughs> and just before the clip. It, it's an adaptation of a theatre play. It's a very short clip. It's not that you can see the, the story. It's just after that I'm gonna to explain to you what I find interesting.
Mais j'ai bien peur que ce genre de douleur-là ne mérite aucune considération. Dans une de ses dernières lettres, ma mère m'écrivait « L'amour, ce n'est pas un sentiment honorable. Mais j'ai bien peur que ce genre de douleur-là ne mérite aucune considération. Dans une de ses dernières lettres, ma mère m'écrivait « L'amour, ce n'est pas un sentiment honorable. » Mon second mari me conseillait « Tu devrais bien vers 50 ans écrire une sorte de manuel qui apprendrait aux femmes à vivre en paix avec l'homme qu'elles aiment. Un code de la vie à deux. » Je suis peut-être en train de l'écrire. Mes anciennes amours, comment on gagne, comment on apprend à t'écouter. Okay, so this is a film that where I have done the costume is an adaptation of a very famous uh, writer, French writer called Colette. And I worked a lot with the production designer. It's a 1927-28 period film. And we were very interested, the both of us, so the production designer and me on the costume to work together on the world paper and on the costume. Yeah. And you have seen, Very similar. they are similar on the color, they're not similar on the pattern, but the idea was really to be coordinated together. Like if she would get into the world, because the story is that she's writing in her house and all, nearly all the things in her house. And I thought it was very interesting to look at the painter, French painter, painter called Matisse, that has done a lot of very uh, beautiful, colorful paintings, and collage and things, and we, we were inspired by him, and then he has done those paper, wallpaper, that were painted, you know, really for the film, and I have done costumes that are related to them. And so this is really, something that I really find interesting, you know, that there is a relationship. It's not just an old dress. It has been designed for, you know, and that's what I like in working with a filmmaker, you know. So next year, yeah. you can see. Pian, de quoi vis-tu en dehors de moi? De peu de choses, de peu de choses et de vous. Ça fait pas un lobby riche C'est à moi de l'estimer. Oui. Quelquefois, quelquefois, quand on n'avait pas le temps de me recevoir à Paris, je me disais, tant mieux. L'envie de la voir me passera plus vite en ne la voyant pas. Je n'ai qu'à patienter. Et quand j'y retournerai, elle aura tout à coup 60, 70 ans. Alors la vie redeviendra possible, et même agréable. Et puis idea of what is on the wall, you know, and the relationship with the costume. So, you know, in her bedroom, <coughs> she was alone, and the color are violent. And in the second scene, yeah. she's with her lover. 
And suddenly she's very sweet, you know, because she wants the relationship to be okay. And with the production designer, we work really on, on wool patterns that are very more sweet. And her dress is in velvet and, you know, and similar silk. Color and similar color. And it's only, you know, lila and blue, light blue, light green, and it's all really chosen together. Okay. So next clip is my father's movie that he had directed in 64. Uh, Umbrella of Sherbrooke. Maybe this film some of you have seen. The English title is Umbrella of Sherbrooke. It's a <laughs> classic uh, we'll film with Catherine Deneuve. You can look in. Did she have many scenes in her room? No, it's different scenes, but I chose that just to explain that the relationship between, you know, a filmmaker, a director of photography, a production designer, a, a fashion designer, mm -hmm. has, is related. Yeah. Because you can invent something altogether. And sometimes the costume is the spot for the other. Right. And mm -hmm. sometimes it will be the production design that will be the spot for this costume. Like if a production design say, I want it all gold, then me as a costume designer, I, I'm not going to choose the gold as the color of the dress, otherwise you don't see the dress. You know, so it's really to, mm -hmm. to make you understand that this is a work of crew mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. to get to an aesthetic, mm -hmm. you know? So you're not obliged to like it, right. but it's their choice, right, 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 right. you know? And have a purpose for the yeah. choice. Si je changeais de coiffure Ma bague de fiançailles Elle est affreuse Ce bracelet Il est importable Personne n'en voudra Et ton collier Mon collier tu crois C'est un crime, non jamais je ne m'en sépare. D'ailleurs, il est sur mon fond. Allons donc, après tout, il n'est pas si joli que ça. Okay, so this is the contrary, you know. The wall pattern is flowers and the costume in front are plain, only one color. Mm -hmm. It's to understand that in the same movie, there is an evolution of the costume. The costume is not something you've done at the first scene and it doesn't move till the end of the film. It has a relation and it's an evolution in the film. So, you know, for the mother, <coughs> it's a contrary. She's very strict, she has a red, you know, tire. And here in her bedroom, the wall has flowers. And the relationship of red and pink. Here in India, you are very extraordinary on the colors. It's really something, uh, you, you invented the colors, you know, but in Europe, it, we're, we're much more shy with the colors. We, we don't, sometimes we don't dare to put, you know, red and pink with a yellow. But you see, in this film, the production designer and the costume designer really accepted to, to, to put bright colors together and not be afraid, you know, to be like a, a painting, yeah. you know. 
and I, I find it, I think maybe that's why you can still see the movie today and you're still interested in the aesthetic. The, the, the costume, the production design, really, and the singing, and brings the film totally alive. Yes. It is so joyful. Uh, I think for an Indian audience, something yeah, like this. Yeah, this is a great film, really. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you could find it on yeah. YouTube, some little clip. Yeah. Bollywood has tried to copy this yeah. often, I think. Oh. Okay. <laughs> what was the film's name? Perhaps it's Shadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one? The Umbrella of Shadow. So I've done the costume of this film. Which is the window of the shop. 
So you have the gold thing and the thing thing. Il y en a plein les rues. Alors François, protège-moi. Mon François, serre-moi contre toi. Ma petite Violette, tu es toute rouge. C'est parce que j'ai couru. So it's the same thing, you know, on the other side, the posters are very graphic, have been redone. So it's really uh, to give you an idea of those posters are the poster of the strike because it's the story of workers uh, in a boat, you know, uh, in the, uh, where they construct boats. Boats, yeah. 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 And the, the workers are on strike. And it's the story of this man, a worker that is on strike, and this is his, you know, fiancé, and she wants to marry, and he doesn't want to marry because it's a strike. So behind him, it was the posters of, you know, the workers and the syndicate and things, and it's very graphic. I don't think it's really like that in real life, you know, but it doesn't matter. We're, we're, we're in the story, and in the story, it's very <coughs> graphic. So this is a film directed by... <laughs> exactly for the question because this is outside. So how do you do outside to get it so aesthetic that everything in the street is exactly like you, you invented it? Well, then you repaint the street. <laughs> you know? And in that case, I mean, with the production designer, they had repaint half of the city. Oh. You know, to get white. Why white? Because white is the main color of the film, which is very unusual, because usually in cinema, you know, director or photography, they say white is a bad color because it's too shiny, it's too bright, it's difficult, and we get, uh, you know, next to the white, what do you do? And, and on this film, it was the contrary. They decided white is the base, and on the white was on two colors. So the rest is white with a little thing. But then when they go into the, you know, in the, into the city, all what they cross, is always colors. And even on the walls, it's white, and suddenly you have one stripe of blue or one stripe of anything. Okay. So it's really how to reinvent, reinvent the city. So it's, I think, that, you know, um, if you want to do it in a film and you want to do it inside, you can do it also outside. It's a bit, you know, crazy, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's possible. education. I have seen all the American musical comedy, all the musicals, American, Indian, uh, a lot of Indian Bollywood came too. But I wanted to show you La Belle de Moscou, which is a 1952 or 53 film. Because for me, these global films were very important for me. And this is for me a perfect costume. I mean, it's totally beautiful. And I choose this one because 
because I wanted to show you that it's very fakely simple. It looks simple, but it's very complicated. And Sid Charit is a very well-known American actress, and she was a dancer, and she did a lot of musical arts. Uh, we call her Long Legs, because she has so beautiful long legs. And why I chose this is because it's very interesting. You know, it's done in studio, so this is a fake place, totally fake. But the fake place has been designed by the production designer as a real place. So you see the wall is a little bit old and it's scratched. It's the contrary of what we have seen before in my father's room. So they do in studio the reality, okay? So the reality is the stairs are not so bright, the walls are a little bit you know, old, the door has been painted like this. And inside of that, there's a musical which is totally not real life, because of course you don't dance to say something, you know. But I wanted to show you that this costume for me is really the perfection. I mean, it's, of course, you don't find a skirt like this in a shop. You don't find a sweater like this. You don't find a belt. You have to do it by, you know, a, a special uh, uh, tailoring. But for me, I mean, the circle of the skirt is a double circle and it gives you know the shape when she's dancing and the fact that the top is where you don't see her skin you know i find it much more sexy much more sexy than if you could see a lot of her you know skin and you have little open you know arms and and jewelry and i for me this is you know absolutely beautiful and it really had a lot of influence on after you know for me in costume to to see this American movies because they they had a very high perfection and a high tradition to put costume design really in front. What is very interesting is that in American films, on you know uh, when you see the title, and then you have the production, and then you have a film directed by, and then you have costume. You never have this in other culture of cinema. Why? Because in America, there is a very high tradition of thinking that costume is very important. Mm -hmm. And if you look at old films, mm -hmm. usually costumes are in the front. Mm -hmm. And after you have director of photography, mm -hmm. and after you have art direction. But it always made me smile, mm -hmm. you know, is that costume designer in Hollywood, uh, when they begin, you know, after the silent uh, production, were, you know, hired by studios. And you had huge stars that were fashion designers, mm -hmm. that, you know, for, they would do like 10 films a year, 12 films a year, but they were in front after the film director, right. which is never the case today, never. You know, you're at, you're at the end. If you're at the beginning of the, of the film, you're like this. Okay, next one. That's interesting, yeah. That's interesting. So it's perfect. It's, it's, it's just a miracle. Yes. This is the film that made me uh, decide to do costume. It's the Jean Renoir, Le Carrosse d'Or. And you know it's a uh, uh, 18th century period costume, and this costume I was 15, I think, when I saw the film. You can please play music with me. And when I saw this film, I thought, okay, I'm going to do this job. I want to do this job. This is perfect. This brown, this black, this jewelry, the white. It's just modern. It's not the historical costume from the museum. It's the costume designer reinvented this period. It's frozen. Huh? Is it okay? Yeah. It's, no, it's frozen. Continue? Yeah. Yeah. So, can you stop? This is a film of Jean Cocteau of 1948, 49, so of course I did not do the costume when I was born. 
But I chose it's a very beautiful story about a, a, you know, a young woman and a young man, they meet and they're not supposed to love each other. Okay. And what I thought very interesting in this film is how the costume designer decided that the both of them would be similar costumes. Man and woman, woman and man. And you don't really see it, but you know, he has a white shirt, she has a white shirt. He has a kind of a sweater with no sleeves, and she has a dress with no sleeves. And it's the idea of, it, is, is, if you're in love with uh, somebody, is, can you melt in the same costume? You know, what is a, a man costume, what is a woman costume? Is, is this difference going to be absurd? And this film is really interesting in the relationship of you know, man and woman. And Jean Marais, who's the actor, he was the lover of Jean Cocteau. So he was homosexual, and he never went out with a woman. But in this film, their relationship of love is really interesting. And they are like, the two are feminine, or the two are masculine. And it's the question is, typically, how the costume gives you a clue of the story. So um, it, it's really a black and white film, very aesthetic film, because they are you know, on the boat, on the, on, on the, on the water. It's totally uh, you know, not reality. But, and you know, she's, she has long hair, he has long hair. And they, they, they are nearly the same. We don't know who is who. Can you continue? I thought it's very interesting. J'ai encore quelque chose à vous avouer. Vous allez me trouver tellement grotesque. Quand vous êtes parti de la chambre en claquant la porte et que je suis resté seul, j'ai cru. Enfin, je. Enfin, j'ai été assez bête pour croire que, que vous aviez compris qu'il ne s'agissait pas de mon oncle, qu'il s'agissait de moi. Vous avez cinq ans. Uh, so for me, you know, the aesthetic in film is very important. So I'm always very touched when I see this uh, big reflection on the work of what has been decided for the costume. Okay, next one. from my age of six till now, you know, and, and Fredasta is just joyful. Why I show you that is because I have done the costume of the last film of my father, and it was a, there was a part in the film that was a musical part, and we did an homage, you know, at the American musical, okay. so now we have it. Okay. So now it's my costume, it's not the... Si m'as-tu m'as tout appris, grâce à toi j'ai perdu l'esprit, j'ai été pauvre, j'ai été roi, j'ai vécu mille vies à la fois. Si m'as-tu m'as tout donné, tant de fois tu m'as fait rêver, j'ai connu l'amour, la beauté, le luxe, le calme, la volupté. I give the taste of that period, you know, like the girls are in black and white because I thought it was more fun to not put them in colors. <coughs> it was an homage at all that period movies, you know, and just the Christmas clocks and you know, the dresses and it's all what you have in your dream when we're a little girl. You know. So in, in, a, in a French film, usually you would not have men dancing with top hats. No, it's, it's, it's very is, American. It's in the film, it's the stage performance. Oh, I understand that, but yeah. usually French films would not do that. No, we don't yeah. have that
show you the couple in front of the poster. So this film is taking care, it's taking place while the strike of 68, you know, a very important strike of workers in France. And the beginning of the film is in black and white because the beginning of the film gives, puts you in the period, you know, of 1958. And suddenly the colors come. And of course, this is workers. Okay, and so Jacques Demy asked me to, to, to think that each person, each character, will have a color during the film. And that will be an evolution in the film by the costume. So of course, you know, the red sweater did not exist in the shop. I couldn't find a red sweater in, 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 in wool. It was not possible. So I made it knit. Okay. Somebody knitted a sweater. Somebody knitted a sweater for me. And the shirt, the purple shirt, couldn't find a purple shirt that way. So I dyed the shirt. I got this white shirt and I dyed it in purple. And the green is the same thing. It's to just to make you understand that sometimes we don't find things in shops, so we are obliged to make them or dye them or change them or you know it's. Our job is, 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 is interesting too because we are in the reality where we have to find solutions. Because the filmmaker says, I want, maybe you give me a green shirt. But at that period, you go in the shops and the fashion is not green. The fashion is yellow, so there's no green shirt. So you buy a, you know, an old white shirt and you buy it. And I like the idea that our, you know, our job is to be very practical, you know, to find solutions. Vous comprenez de son vivant, mon mari. Le colonel n'aurait jamais toléré ça. Par ailleurs, je ne voudrais pas héberger un anarchiste. Mes opinions ne vous regardent pas. Vous savez, je paie ma chambre. Si mes idées vous déplaisent, je déménage. Okay, so this is the same film, so it's the same character, but it's not in this good um, cycle because the first, the first, in the beginning of the film, he has a yellow sweater, that, and then he has a pink sweater, and then he has a red sweater. So it's very interesting because you know this actor, um, Richard Berry, when he was hired by my father to play in the movie. And my father said to him, look, uh, we're going to do a, organize a meeting with Rosalie for the costume. And so Jacques Demis, the director, said to him, you know, I would like you to wear, you know, like sweaters, knit sweaters in very precise color. I would like you to have a yellow one, a pink one, and a red one. And the actor went like, ah, <laughs> this is not possible. I'm going to, I'm going to look like a homosexual. <laughs> and my father said, what are you talking about? And it's really interesting that, so the actor was feeling really not comfortable of the aesthetic idea of the film, okay? So after the meeting, we go out, and, then, and the next day he calls me and said, can I take a coffee with you? And so he takes a coffee and says, well, I want to discuss with you of the costume. What do you think? sure it's a good idea that yellow sweater you know, I feel like I'm a girl so you know my job is to be precise and to be in the world of the film director and if I believe he's right I'm going to be you know very tough so I say to him yeah I understand I understand but let's try it so you know our job is to be psychologic and to be able to talk to actors if they're anxious of something of the costume. So, you know, I say to him, look, let's try. If you don't feel well, we will find solution. You know, I mean, uh, okay. Next day, he calls me. Do you think I can invite you to a dinner? <laughs> okay. So he invites me to dinner and say, in the middle of dinner, he say, you know, I thought about that pink sweater. You know, it's not possible. <laughs> really, you know, you have to understand me. I, I go out a lot with girls and if they see me with that pink so, you know, so it was really interesting because he, were, he couldn't make it, you know, he just he couldn't make it. So finally we have done, you know, tried the costume and everything, and finally 
finally accept where he was from. But I was feeling he was not so sure. Film finish and everything. And this actor became a filmmaker, you know, and we still good friends. And years after that, he said, you know what? I learned so much on this film. And the fact I was kind of feeling miserable with those sweaters made me understand I was stupid. It's because I was thinking, uh, I'm a sexy boy, I want to go out with girls. What are they going to think with the yellow sweaters? But in fact, they're not going out with me for the yellow sweaters. Of course not. And in the same time, it made him realize what is being a filmmaker is being precise in the project. And the <coughs> filmmaker wants the actor getting into the project. And after this film, he decided to be a filmmaker. So finally, this frustration he had, you know, made him decide to be a filmmaker. And he said to me, you know, this film was most important in my life because I realized the work that was behind all the film I had done before. There was not a work of design for the set, for the light, for the costume, for the, the film direction. So it's really interesting from after sometimes they fight against the costume. They don't want this, you know. And our job is to to help them to accept it all sometimes, to change if we feel it really doesn't work. But in this situation, it was working. It was just his macho ego that was little, you know. And when he accepted that it was stupid because it was just not his life, he was not wearing the sweater in his life. Right. He was wearing the sweater in a film. Right. You know, when he understood the difference. Yeah, he was a totally different person. He was, yeah. it was okay. Yeah. the wife of the crazy guy who's in green, you know. And she's, I designed a mink coat. Okay. So you say, oh, a fur coat, a mink coat, you're going to buy it in the shop. No, you cannot. Because I didn't want it to be too big, I didn't want it to be too short, I wanted it to be precise. So, you know, our, our job is to be able to design anything. A mink coat, a yellow sweater, a shoe, uh, a tuxedo, you know, and I always say, you know, our imagination can be on anything, you know, and it was the first time I designed a, a main coat to choose the, you know, the fur, the, the color, the texture, and this is the joy of our, you know, of uh, what we do, is we have the possibility to discover a lot of different type of, you know, fur. I did not know a lot about fur, and so when you you have to, you, you learn, you make, you know, information, and, and, and I like the fact you always learn, you know, we're not static, right. we, we're never static. Of paintings, 
big paintings that are in the Louvre Museum in Paris called no no it's 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 a painter called called recreation recreation uh, it's a painter called De La Croix and he's in, a lot of his paintings are in the Museum of the Louvre in Paris okay and the idea of Jean-Luc Denard is to recreation the, the the painting in real you know so I have done that work so every material has been done. Nothing is is like I got. Oh, you couldn't get the real colors? No, so yeah. I couldn't get the real colors of the painting, so everything <coughs> has been done. You know, like the blue is dyed and it's all in boy's hand. The color of the of the woman gown is dyed. All the cavaliers, everything <coughs> has been dyed. Everything has been done. You know, it's, it's really, this job is be into the painting and to redo exactly what is the painting. And the painter did not really do the reality. He already had the work of reinventing what he was looking at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are set after, you know. And we have to redo, you know, like in this film is what, 1885, I think, and the painting, you know, uh, of the 18th century. So, we, I had to find material that would look like of the 18th century, but was not the 18th century. So this is really a very interesting job. Yeah. We create right, right. something, you know. Quite well, a challenge, actually. Yeah. It's a challenge. When, the when, that, that yeah. when I do that kind of work, I feel I'm like the assistant <laughs> of the painter. Right, you right, know? right. I'm a little person trying to redo the painting. That's so, lovely. C'est pas sage qu'il faut. Il faut encore chercher. Where the, the painter, you know, he had the, the brush, so he decided it's longer. 
oh, okay, it's longer, but then the, the body is not longer. You know, the body is not there, but the, 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 the bitter goes down. So the, each actor had a structure on them, and on that structure, a kind of a, like a corset. And on this, I fold the material and hold it with pins, you know, on them. And uh, since it was like this, high, different person on different levels, with a crane, I would go up and fix everything and go on that inside. And when it was finished, after four and a half, then the film director, Jean-Luc Godard, could film. And, and the light was also being done at the same time? In the same time. And it was Raoul Kouta, very good DP. Mm. You know, very good. It's an incredible film, you know. And this work was really like being at the service of being a little assistant to redo the paintings. Yeah. So this film is, my father's film, is the same film we have seen, you know, with the outside, when we repaint the, the, the city. In white, yeah. yeah. And this is a scene where it's the same technique, is that you use white, and on the white you put colors. Like a child, you know, you just put simple colors. to respect what they are, to respect the character, but to respect 
you know, what you see in real life. And when, you know, I, I travel, and even in France, you don't need to go out of France. We have homeless too. Huh? Um, I'm always, you know, interested of looking at people, at looking at how they are, how is it in the street? Because sometimes when you speak to a film director afterwards, and you told, tell him, you know, oh, okay, you want to be homeless, I'm going to do it to you. Look, he said, that's not possible. I said, look, I, this is the costume I saw in the street. You know? and, and sometimes reality is, has more imagination than we can imagine. You know? So this is really a different type of, of costume design. It's really another way of thinking is to be in this character. And, and finally, this homeless, well, the pants was done on measure, and we had three. The sh boots, we had two pairs of boots that were, you know, unmeasured. So that means they were expensive for a homeless. But yes, they were expensive because I thought it was interesting that the second pair would be room and we could open on the back so she would look like middle, uh, middle age homeless. You know, so this is really another, uh, another uh, way of thinking. You know, use costume, you know, bad shape, dirty, mud. And we put this, we put real mud, we, we use them with stones, with, you know, we brush them. So this is another part, you know, because the first presentation was kind of, I would say, kind of very lovely. And, and, and our job is being that reality to for some of them, you know. And to finish this presentation, uh, this is a film that my father has done. And it was very interesting because one part of the film was shot in black and white with a system where we only could put one color. So it's black, white, and red. Chanter, c'est donner du bonheur. Et le public me rend ce bonheur. En ce moment, par exemple, j'aime pas la chanson que je répète. Elle me résiste. Vous voyez ce que je veux dire Nous ne sommes pas ici pour parler de vos chansons. Ni du bonheur. Mais pourquoi suis-je ici au juste Visiblement, il ne sait rien. On ne vous a pas prévenu. Prévenu Et vous ne lui avez rien dit. Ça ne relève pas de ma compétence. So, you know, this is a technique, very difficult technique. In fact, um, the skin is painted in green, and it's shot, it's shot in black and white. So the, and then in the lamp, the, the only color on the set was red. And it's a neg as a negative, they, they get, the, the, the skin begins white, and the only color is, is, is red. Okay. So this was the, just to show you a movie, and now we're going to, it's going to be quick, but I'm going to show you a PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is just to give you an idea that the luxury of my job <laughs> is that you can go through so many different periods. You know, like, you know, after doing films, I did a lot of theater plays, and I did a lot of opera stage. And the luxury is that in the same year, you can do, a, you know, a dance costume, and then you can do a military costume, and then you can do, I mean, really so much difference. And it's not because of, I'm a woman that I'm not able to do a man costume, okay? So I think, come on, I can do anything. Okay, so Billy Bird, okay, this is a stage costume, nice and you can go, yeah. So just to show you, this is, was a stage opera with us, only men, not one woman. And I was still able to do it. <laughs> This is Traviata, so maybe somebody, some of you know Traviata. And I had uh, decided to, um, to do, you know, the character of Traviata had one color and only a huge jewelry in front of her. Next. This is funny. So this is a commercial I've done for Perrier, you know, the, the, the water Perrier. And it was directed by a very famous film director called Jean-Jacques Hano. Yes. And we shot in Namibia in Africa. And it was prehistoric plants, you know? So everything was fake, like their nose, their teeth, their hair, and everything was in really, I only used real leather and really, you know, little things that I would find there. So wood, 
little shells with a, and I'm with him and we were like in camping in the middle of Nanibi. It was like weird. So this is a production of Madame Butterfly mm -hmm. and this was a work I really liked to do. It was really graphic, you know, uh, being in Japan and not getting in the kind of folklore, you know, of Japan, but um, trying to, to do a modern Japan. Next one. Next one. Okay, this is Faedra, it's a theater play. And I was in Fed, yeah, a Greek play. And it was very interesting because the director asked, what is all the man characters that be black? And I really worked on leather. And this is not material, it's leather. Everything was in leather. So it was a kind of a challenge so that the leather would look like, like fabric. And the man, you know, where the leather was, uh, I wet the leather and put it in things so to shrink it, to, to do it with the costume on them. And then I designed the, the jewelry and the arm and the sword. Oh, this is funny, I thought for you, because it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's, you know, it's taking, taking place, in fact, in the Sri Lanka, in the story, the love story. So I have done it in Paris, but I only bought saris in the Indian you know, uh, shops in, in Paris, because my challenge is I didn't buy one material that was French, but in France. So, yeah. so this is uh, a 18th, 17th century play, uh, and what is interesting on the dress is this is velvet, and on the velvet I painted, hand painted, like they used to do it in Venice in the 15th century, 14th and 16th century. So it's done you know, like with uh, wooden patterns, and they put gold painting, and it's on silk velvet. So it's really the technique that they were using at that period. But of course, it's only the technique, then the shape, and then uh, the iron like So this is a stage opera taking care, place in the 1930s. Um, next one. Next one. And this is very interesting. It's sometimes on the stage, you know, when you're back on the stage, I take pictures of the costume I make just to, to, to remind me. And sometimes it's interesting when you see them next to each other, you understand that they go all together. You know, next one. This is very interesting. It's, this is a painter of Berlin in 1930s called Otto Dix. And he's a very kind of, you know, he painted a lot of parties and people drinking. And, and this was really my inspiration for those costumes. So I thought, you know, most of the time my inspiration comes from painting, from art. So in that case, you can see that I did a dress that is inspired by the painting. Okay, so this is funny, next one. This is a stage opera outside in an antique theater, 6,000 person coming to wow. see the play. Next one. Next one. This is in France? Yes, in France. So this is an opera high school. So it's just to show you that you can do a lot of often, like in Bollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. This is the same place that I, it's an opera taking place in Sicily, in Italy, south of Italy. So I decided to do all black and white in Sicily, except one costume. Look, the dress. The big dress of the stage. That you see in color. Everything would be white and black, otherwise. That's the same, you know, it's military uh, opera house, what is that? And this is funny because it's a stage opera of Mexico, you know, Le Chanteur de l'Equipe. So this is a little bit like, uh, for me it was a little bit of homage at Bollywood. It's like, you know, musical where you have a lot of costume, a lot of colors, and it's very rich and very joyful. Next one. You know, it's, so it's taking place in Mexico, um, but I really thought, so come back, before, before, yeah, I really thought for me it was the smell of Bollywood, but it's not. How many people do you have working with you when you do these costumes? I don't know, I have a lot of 
the, the costume is often the zoom costume, but you know, on stage costume like the big ones, I right. do like 280 costumes. Right. <coughs> I've done, I don't know, I think I counted. But you, you hand draw each of the costumes yes. and then the I stitching. Think I, I, I made a count that I've done 10,000 costumes. Wow. 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 This is Tristan Rizzo. So we'll just to show you different things I've, I've done. This is very interesting because this is done hand painted. I hand painted the coat. Wow. Myself. And this is all, you know, dyed and, you know, used and getting dirty. Oh, and this is for you. Well, you this is like a little bit, you know. I can do that too. <laughs> like, you know, dancing class. So is there a mic in the audience or? Oh, it's okay. I can speak now. Okay. No, no, we first, can hear, but I don't know. First of all, thank you very much because it was a fantastic workshop. Hello. And you make me proud to be French. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, of course, I know very well the work of the family yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yours. But because you said you had to penetrate and to follow, you know, the, the wishes. Thank you. The wishes of the director. Yes. Um, it's a personal question. Of course, uh, you were very close to your father and to your mother. And uh, did you have any arguments, or were you in total harmony when you were working with them, or did you have sometimes to oh, influence? Never. I, to be honest, I never argued with them working. It's, it's when I worked with, with them. It was not my father or my mother. It was an artist who I worked with. Sure. So the relationship was really on the work we were doing, not on, did you eat well at lunch? <laughs> or, uh, oh, you're bad mood today. No, I mean, we were artists, you know. So we could argue on an aesthetic or artistic thing. But I was lucky enough that they were so happy to work with me. And I was so happy to work with them that honestly, we never argued. Total magic and really yeah. congratulations for It's luxury for me to have worked with my father and my mother. It's very rare that artists Incredible. can work mm -hmm. together. You know, and you know now I don't do too much costume. To be honest, I have done a production this summer of a, in the antique theater of Madame Butterfly, 400 kimonos. But I don't really do anymore. You know, I do more art uh, direction now, and I do production and I produce film. But for me, it's, it's what I said at the beginning. I feel so gifted, you know, that whatever you do when you're 20, 25, 30, 35, when you get older now and more next to 60, um, it's rich, richness that you get into, you know. So thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm happy you sent me that because I, I always try that this master class. I'm not boring, you know, because it's is It's fantastic. Fantastic. You know, Congratulations. Uh, a lot of the clips we saw had uh, music in them. Is that something that uh, excites you more than others? Do you prefer, prefer working in musicals? No, no, in fact, I chose those clips for you here okay. in, in Goa because I thought, you know, it, it would be maybe for some person of the audience that were used more to musical and of the tradition in Bollywood. I thought it was nice to kind of select for you uh, this musical. No, I'm, I'm inspired by anything. This is the good thing of being a costume designer. 
you come and see to me and say, I'm going to do a film taking place in the basement and we're going to have only people doing, I don't know what. I would say, yes, I'm not interested in musical. I'm interested in the relationship with the film director and with what you do, you know. I can design anything, <coughs> shoe, jewelry, hats, makeup, I don't care. It's what is interesting is what you do of what you ask, we ask you. Okay. Also, many of the clips for Jacques Tami's films. Yeah, no, I really okay. make a selection of very joyful and colorful uh, for you. Because, you know, India is a country of color. Yeah. Jacques Tami made a lot of musicals, so, yes. yeah. So do you have a, a passion for opera? Yes, I, I, I had the, the chance to work a lot with music. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then we, which is uh, maybe a couple of questions in the back. It's already one o'clock, yeah. yeah. Which is the best way to work with a director? I mean, like, when, when uh, you and it's not matching with, with the way the director wants. It never happened to me. <laughs> Anyone in the back? Any questions? Okay, this gentleman has... Okay, that lady there this gentleman. Do you want to give the mic? They need the mic, man. So that lady all the way in the back, and then this gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> okay, give it, maybe you, we can hear your question. I just wanted to know how do you look at the background? How do you look at costuming for the extras? And you can ask the extras, costume for the extras. Oh, I do the, for me, the extra is as important as the main character. You have to understand the background, when I say the background, is the extra, is the little role, the little actor for me is as important than the lead part. The big mistake is to think that the costume is only the main character. This is the basic mistake. And one here and one here, okay, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Madam, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I'm a costume designer in the United States. And I guess I have more of a, um, a thank you than a question. I, I remarked that the, when you mentioned that in the U.S. that they have more of an appreciation for costume designers, although I've been working for 30 years in the industry, and I've often found that is not the case. No, but it's not the case now. I was saying, I got to you. But we create magic in a place that it just shows up. I work mostly in the theater, and you see the sets constructed, you see the lights constructed, you get to dress rehearsal, and the costumes appear. So many people don't realize the work that goes into them and the depth and the world and the storytelling. And I want to just thank you for putting into words what I tell my students every day. Oh, thank you. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you. And the gentleman there, yeah. You came into film fatality and the floor of that way. I wanted to know what were the difficulties in this process of 10, designing 10,000 costumes and all these things. Difficulty, there's no difficulty. It's, it's energy, it's working in a crew with people sewing, dying, going to buy uh, the button that is missing. You know, I don't work alone. I mean, I mean like a orchestra chef, you know, and I have the people working with me. So there's no difficulty if you have the people with you that you can share your project, then it's no difficulty. The difficulty appears when you have no money, people don't work well, the film director, it happened once or twice for me, you know, that fine, he's not interested in your work, but this is luxury. We are in a world that is so tough, you know, <coughs> that what we do are, is necessary to continue our culture, and it's necessary for education. But we are gifted to work in art. I'll put the question again in a different way. Relatively, what were your toughest parts? What? What's, the, what's the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge kind of thing. Sometimes the biggest challenge is the time. Because we have less time, you know, we have a little time to do, like when I do an opera outside, you know, an amphitheater, we have like 300 or 400 costumes and we have, you know, to prepare this, we have 10 days on the set, but to prepare before, so you have to be really ready when you arrive there, you should not miss anything, you know, I mean, because then it's really, the, the one minute is lost, is really difficult. But, you know, if you organize yourself well before, you can. Uh, like, what is the difference between 80s 
and now, like in this hiding a costume, uh, I mean freezing on a costume, like is it after the look test? Like after you've taken pictures and the characters come alive after putting it on? Well, it's, 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 it's plus this, of course, it's, I like to do always that, you know, with makeup and hair and costume with the DP, the director of photography, because sometimes you change things, you know, you, and then they get the live when it's on the set, but all the work before is enormous. You know, when we get on the set, it's finished. Globally. Yeah. I mean, my job is finished when it's on the set. Uh, of course, I am there, there's a problem, but all the energy and all the, the, the manufacture and all the design and all the imagination and all the psychology is before. Yeah, but, but like you do, like, like, uh, you do first, first, like you have a screen, like you have a first draft and a second draft. Like how you arrive at the final dress? Oh, I you usually I, I arrive at the final uh, for the draft of the costume. Yeah. Well, usually I first I design with no colors. You know, first it's basically what, or maybe I don't design sometimes. You know, and then the colors come with the production designer and the DP and the filmmaker. And then or I find the dress or I do the dress depends on the project. You know, sometimes it's a challenge to go and buy everything. You buy it and you change a little thing and you dye it and you change the buttons and you know. And sometimes you have to do everything because you don't find it. Because you want a purple dress and you want no button. And you want it this and you want it very soft. And what you find in the shop is not purple, not soft, with button. So you do it. You know, it's really it really depends on the project. You know, but the, the, the collaboration uh, usually with the film director and the production designer is we meet once a week. You know, and we get together working on the project. And then the production designer will say, you know, funny, I changed the color of the bedroom because the, 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 the gray I found, it was not good. Finally, it's going to be pink. I say, pink? OK, so I have to change the nightgown because the nightgown was pink. So it will really be stupid to be, you know, with the wall and the nightgown. So sometimes it's in that way, and sometimes it's on the other way. You know, I will find a nightgown that is really nice, and the production designer will say, oh, that's great. Good idea. You know, I will change the sheet of the bed so it's nice for your nightgown. You know, it's really a collaboration. Do you actually own all the 10,000 dresses that no, you I, I don't own yeah. anything? Yeah. I, I, you know, it's like we say in French that the people that do costumes are not well dressed you know, because we don't have no energy for that. We have all the energy for the others. <laughs> but on that note, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.